Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about craftsmanship, quality, experience, and knock your socks off. Today, we're gonna be talking about a board gaming table from a company called Rathskellers. Uh, over the last many months, we've been working together to try to get a table for me, and uh, I finally was able to purchase one, and we're gonna go over it. I'm gonna show you all the different ins and outs of this table, the different options you can get, show you all the ones that I got, and then I'm gonna see you on the final thoughts to tell you what I've liked about the table, what I would suggest if you're thinking about buying a table like this, so here we go. After about four or five months of production, we were excited the table came, everything was packed nice, and then it took us about, you know, about 20 minutes to put the table in the house and screw the legs on. Now once I got the table in the house, it fit perfectly just as we measured and expected, and we're even able to get a total of eight chairs around the edges, and we can even put some in the corners if we need to. Now all of their tables are made of solid wood. In fact, it's white European oak, which is very high quality wood, and they're the only ones worldwide that offer this for no extra upgrade, where other manufacturers use things like fir and ash and other types of wood. Now you may have noticed that we had a lighter, sort of almost a grayish type of table stain, and you can see the one how that here is the one we went with, but you can see they have a ton of different stains that you can choose from, and we went with the lighter color just because we felt like it would be timeless no matter how things change, uh, and it was light and airy. Now you may have noticed we had eight chairs around our table, so you might be wondering about the size that I got and what's available. Uh, this is the counselor table. Here's a table of the different uh, sizes that you can get. You know, it can be as small as say 98 centimeters by 188, which essentially is 38 and a half inches wide by 74 inches long. The longest and the biggest of both sizes is 125 centimeters by 230, so it's about 49 inches by 90 and a half inches. Now we went with almost the smallest of both. We went with 110 centimeters wide, which is about 43 inches. We went one size up on the width, and we kept the length as small as it gets as 188. So this is actually one of the smaller tables, and we were able to fit eight chairs around it comfortably. Now on top of the stain to protect it, they use a high quality commercial conversion varnish. It's used a lot of times in the automotive industry. Uh, it's, it's chemical resistant, water resistant, and it's far more durable than any other type of varnish. And they put it on there because this thing's gonna get used a lot and it's gonna be protected. Now you may have noticed that the leaves on my table go widthwise and there's plenty of them. There's actually seven different leaves in this, this size table. And this is a choice that you could get that I decided on. Instead of having the longer lengthwise leaves, which I think there would have been about two of those. And I did that for some reasons that I'll show you in just a moment. But how you get this table open is under here there's actually a button. And you push it up and this rod comes up and allows you to lift up the top one here. And this allows this to come out. And then you can continue taking the leaves out. Now these leaves are not watertight. They fit the way they're supposed to fit, which is very tight. And the reason why they're not watertight is because they're not supposed to be. In fact, everyone knows that wood curves over time, and also with extreme temperature conditions and humidity, wood can grow and shrink and move around. And so actually what happens is, is these pieces of wood will stay firm, but it will still allow it to breathe and change over time. And this is the very end piece you saw me just lift up a moment ago. And the very end piece has a, bit, has a rubber uh, piece there. That helps keep the expanding uh, and contracting of the wood over time and temperature and things like that. This keeps it sort of tied up against this with the other ones to keep it as tight as possible. And one of just the general things I love about these game tables is you can have a game, you can set it up, you can be playing, you can stop if you get interrupted, put the table back on, have something to eat, finish it off. I like that you can keep the game set up underneath. That helps a lot of playing time. Now these leaves, once the first one's off, these slide back and forth and they're interchangeable. You can put them on either side. Now they have this tongue and groove system where, you know, this side has the groove right there, you can see, and the other side has the tongue. And so what happens is these fit in like this, and that's how they fit tightly, they just right over each other, just like that. But they just slide out and then you can pick them up and remove them. Now the main reason why I got the width wide leaves is so I could do this. This thing is called a trench patrol. It's an option you can get, and it has this groove here that will go into the tongue here. And so what happens is you can just kind of slide this in, and it will fit just like so. And now this is tight, and that allows us 
to only have to take off the leaves of half the table. So we could have some people eating on the other side, or we could eat dinner over there, and then just move right over to the table. Plus, I can have two different games set up. I could set a different game up on the other side and have it ready to go. It's just a really nice feature, and you can roll dice against it. It doesn't go onto the table. It's just really nice. And then once I take all the leaves up, the table's big enough to fit two different games going at once, you know, a full Ticket to Ride size game and a smaller game like Mr. Jack, for example. Now that those games are gone, let's talk in more detail about the inset, the types of them, and how they're constructed. Now the inset is double-sided, and I chose to go with a purple velvet on one side. Now, it is 100% waterproof. It has a very soft touch. And unlike some of the other tables I've played on, uh, even if you go against the grain, you might be able to see it a little bit here on the camera, but normally you don't really see it when you're standing back in real life. I've, I've been on some that you can actually like draw people's names and stuff. It doesn't seem to go back in the grain as much as some of the other ones that I've felt, which I like, because it's easier to keep clean from what I found, and it's easier to keep sort of brushed in the right light. Uh, I've heard they're high maintenance, they're hard to keep clean, they're hard to keep, you know, the grain looking right, but actually with this one, it has not been a problem so far, and I've had the table for about a month. So here's the very top of the table, here's where the leaves would sit, and then, of course, there's the drop for the inset. Now, a couple of things I want to point out before I show you the other side of the inset is this part of the table is solid and it's wide. When you're sitting at the table, you have a lot of room to lean your elbows on. It's solid. It doesn't budge at all. And there's a lot here. It's not like, a, you know, smaller ones that I've seen that are like an inch that really start hurting your arms as you start uh, sitting on there for a long period of time. It's comfortable and I like how wide this is. Now, an, an option I got is this. See this little uh, line here? It actually is a slot. It's called the ledge line. And I love it because you can put cards in there and they're meant to sit at an angle so you don't have to hold your cards. And it might sound silly not holding your own cards, but I gotta tell you, this is actually probably one of the most favorite features of this table. It was totally worth the option to do this because it's so nice being able to move around, be able to move stuff on the board and not have to be always be holding your cards. You just look up and there they are. And when you're sitting at the table, at table height, they are perfect. They sit there, you can actually see the board behind it, and then it's just, it's awesome. You can slide them in and out, you can take them there, and it took me a while to get used to it because I used to just keep holding them in my hands, but sometimes I forgot it was there. It's like, hey, why don't I have it on the ledge line? It's, it, it's awesome. Now to get to the other side of the inset, all you have to do is just put your fingers in those two loops, pull up, it'll raise all the way up, and then you just simply flip it over to the other side so that you have the other side of the inset face up. Now this side of the inset, I went with Simonis Speed Cloth, and this is a very durable material uh, that's not as soft as velvet, but I'd say the cards kind of slide a little bit easier on it. And it's a different type of material that's, you know, different from the velvet, high durability, not quite as soft. So you have your choices between the different materials. Now here you can see many of the different colors you can get this speed cloth in. Uh, now I had chose the powder blue that you see there. I was thinking about wine, but I wanted to go something a little bit neutral, a little bit lighter and brighter to match the light grayish type that the table is that I have. Now, if you take the inset all the way out, there is an acrylic layer here that you'll see. It's almost, it looks like glass, it's acrylic layer. And this is for if you're a sort of a war gamer, you can lift this up. It comes with actually a little suction cup here that helps you get it up. And you can put the maps below there if you wanna play on top of the surface, on top of the map. Also, if you are extremely paranoid about any water getting through uh, the top, if you have a spillage, you can always put this acrylic layer uh, on top of the inset for times like that. Now around the entire table is an aluminum rail system. Back there on the left, you'll see it in focus, and we'll slowly bring it in focus closer to you here. And that is aluminum, not wood, and it holds a lot of the accessories, and I chose the option to paint it just like the table so it sort of blends in, but let's show you what this rail can do. So on this reel, you can put a plethora of accessories. The first thing is sort of a cup holder. Now, let's show you here. This is actually an aluminum piece as well that goes into aluminum here. And this is important because it's an aluminum rail with an aluminum piece going in. And this is for durability. If someone were, if this was wood, if someone were to drop this, now this piece is wood, but the piece that connects is aluminum. So if you had dropped this and it was wood and it chipped, you wouldn't be able to get it in here, but aluminum does not do that. Also, if the, if the rail was actually wood, that could hurt because if you ended up chunking that in like that and it broke and someone leaned down on here, you could actually damage the entire table where this is not gonna happen with the aluminum that's separate from the table. So this goes in just like this, you put it in like that and then it can slide like this. Now this is obviously a single cup holder and these cup holders all come with a silver lining like that which will easily fit sort of say a water bottle. But in America, everything's bigger than normal. <laughs> so if you're doing a, a normal American sized cup, I just take that out and it fits in there quite nice. 
Now on the long side of the table, I place a double cup holder. This sits in between the two players sitting on that side. And then of course, it's just a double cup holder as I showed you before. Now this one here is a wine glass holder. Notice it just looks like a cup holder, but it has this notch so you can fit the stem of the glass in there. And just to show you how it slides in, so you have the glass of wine here, the stem slides right through, and it just sits flush just like that. Another accessory is a bin, which you could just fill up with anything you like. So you could take all the pieces from the game, maybe it's in the other room, bring it into the game room with the bin, and then you've got everything right there. Now this is a card and counter holder, as you can see, much like the ledge line I already showed you that's already built into the table with that option, this has a place where you can put the cards, tons of counters, all sorts of stuff. This is mainly used in larger war games because this is a full one. They also make some that's about half this size. It basically would end here. Those ones you could actually like sit at the table and still have this in front of you, where these ones you'd need to kind of put it to the side of you when you're sitting on the lengthwise table. Now this accessory here can be used for different purposes. One is sometimes I like to put rule books there to keep there because I'm always relying on rules while I'm playing the game as I'm learning them. So I like to put that there. Also, it's mainly made for an iPad. And so as you're playing One Night Ultimate Werewolf or Mansions of Madness or anything that needs an app, you can just have it there right there and it's got a nice angle to look through it. Now this also has a hole in the bottom. So if you want to charge the iPad or have it, you know, getting some juice while you're playing, there's an opening for that. Now, speaking of charging the iPad, there's also an option to get a USB charging station. I have one here and the blue light is on me. We have power and you can actually place up to two different things in there to charge. Now, there's also different drawers you can get in the table. This one's called a daily drawer. It comes out like this and you can have the option of having it put felt or whatever color that you got on there. It opens up here. I keep some remotes for some things that I'll show you later. I've got some coins. I've got some dice. I've got other remotes. I've got more dice. I've got coins, all different things that I'll probably use. And this is slow close. These are so solid. I'm going to go look at that. It just, that was not slow motion. That's actually real time. It's a slow close drawer. And then in this drawer, when I open it up, I've got different little Tupperwares. These are KFC side items that I use to put all my cubes in. Hey, vote Bonacore. Hilarious. And then we've got the bags here that I like to just put different things in and tiles and such. And again, just something that we use on a daily basis. And on this side, we have what's called a colossal drawer. You can do that. It's huge. It takes up almost the whole table. And in here, I have basically all the different accessories for the glasses that I showed you earlier. It also comes with a touch-up pen. So if there's anything that needs to get touched up paint-wise, you can do that. And again, just like the other ones, it's a slow close. Now, one of the features that I've added is LED lighting. You turn it on through a remote, boom, we have the purple lights. Now, that's as bright as they get. That's actually brighter than I tend to play it on. I actually like to keep it just enough so it's got a little pizzazz, but not too much that it's distracting. There's a color wheel that you can literally select like any color of the rainbow and anything in between. You literally just move around a wheel and you can literally get any color you want there. And of course, depending on the side, this side, I'll put it up with purple. If I have it the other side, I'll put it as blue. Now there are different modes that are on there that I can't see using in any regularity. Maybe some werewolf games and like that. There's some that go, you know, like that. You know, but I haven't found any that are, uh, you know, ones that I would use in a great deal. But just having the regular one on there, I really like a lot better than I think I normally would. Now, another feature I got was a Bluetooth speaker system. So here is a little spot that you can either plug in a USB and get some audio directly, uh, or you can do it just through Bluetooth. Here's some volumes. There's also a remote that comes with it that you can, as I, you'll see it blinking as I'm doing the volume there. And it's synced to my phone. So this is really good when you're just playing music or if you're playing an app like Werewolf. Everyone, close your eyes. Copycat, wake up and look at one of the center cards. You are now. So I'm gonna show you what the speakers actually look like on the bottom side. Now under the table, you can see there on the left is a smaller speaker. Those are the mids and the highs. And then in the middle of the table underneath is a subwoofer. So that's where the bass is coming from. And then on the other side, we have the other smaller speaker. On the left side, that's the button I pressed to open the leaves at the beginning of the video. So here's how the power goes in. You'll see this little adapter right here. And there's wires inside the table that bring it up to the Bluetooth and the LED. And so there is basically an adapter that just plugs right in just like that. And then this plugs into a normal wall circuit. Now there's some other accessories you can get too. This is a big, huge wood made chunky dice tower. You'll notice it has the same speed cloth that's on the back of my inset, has the name there. We'll flip it over to show you how it works. I have a five of these 19 millimeter casino dice that are huge and chunky and this thing just swallows it right up, spits them right out. 
Now the last thing I want to show you is sort of leg room. Now standard is 62 centimeters from the bottom of this to the bottom, which is about 24 inches. These are 19 inch chairs. Uh, you know, standard chairs range from I'd say seven to 19 inches, at least in the States they do. Uh, and so here you have a certain amount of leg room depending on uh, the height of the table, which of course is always customizable. If you need something taller, you can ask them to raise the height of the table, which should give you more leg room. Now with these 19 inch chairs, I'm about five foot nine and I have about an inch of clearance. So it's pretty tight with me, but I actually like the way they feel right here. It's, it, it feels nice and tight. However, if you're over six feet tall, like I have a few friends, they don't quite fit under here, but again, uh, you can make the, the table taller or this whole section here would actually be half. They'd only go half as low if you didn't have the Bluetooth speaker system or the drawers. All right, well, there you have the overview. Now, well, I was so excited to get this table because, you know, I've gone to conventions and a lot of the conventions have different branded tables over there uh, and you can play at them. And I always think that playing at a game table just is much more of an experience than anything. And I found that with this table. It's, and I know it's quite new. I've had the table about a month now uh, and, and it is new to me, but I think this is not gonna wear off what I'm gonna talk about it. That's that every game that I play on this feels like an event. It doesn't just feel like I'm playing a game. It really feels like, wow, we're opening up the table, we're sitting down, we're playing at this awesome thing, and it feels like a special event every time I play a game. And it's hard to kind of put that into words, but it just, it feels extra special to be playing games every day on this table. Uh, a few of the other things, the, the velvet itself. Now, I had always wanted the velvet soft touch, and everything I had read and everything Rathskellers has told me is that, the, you know, the other, the speed cloth was much, is much more durable, uh, which probably is true. Uh, but I still wanted a soft touch, so I'm glad I went with both sides. I glad, I'm glad that the, you know, the one side, the blue uh, speed cloth side is supposedly going to last forever. The velvet nut is harder to keep clean and harder to maintain, uh, but it has that softer feel. And I'm glad I went with that uh, because they found a new velvet manufacturer that I am thrilled with. This velvet is actually better than I felt on any table. It has the right amount of consistency, the right amount of soft touch without making it too, you know, busy when you run your hand around the other grave. So I'm, I, I'm really glad I did one on each side. You might want to think about doing that if you're thinking about a table. Uh, I love that the, the, the cards slide and pick up easy. Uh, they definitely do it a little bit easier on the, 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 the Simona speed cloth side they do on the velvet side, but still both of them are much easier than picking it up on a table. So I love just, just the, 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 the feeling of playing on the table, putting the cards down, feeling it down. Uh, also another piece of the thing that I didn't, I don't, not sure I showed in the overview is that the material of below that, uh, either the cloth, the, the speed felt or the velvet, there's actually some foam in there, a little bit of foam. So you push down and it has a little bit of give. It's nice. It's a cushy material. Unlike some of the tables I played on where it has like velvet or something. And then just below that is wood and it's just hard. This has like a little bit of a cushy and a give, which makes it even better when you're playing with the cards. Uh, I love that ledge line that I show with the cards. Again, like we're playing a lot of times and maybe the first month I'm like, wait a minute, why am I holding cards? Wait, this is silly. Let's put them in the ledge line. And once you put them there, man, it's awesome. It's like, oh, your hands are free. Just, it's so nice. It seems like something so simple, but once you've played on the ledge line, I don't know how I'm gonna go back to playing games without it. Um, the cup holders, man. Uh, I love those. I use them a lot. Uh, we, almost every night. Every time we're playing, I'm using the cup holders. I like that you can get the, both the doubles or the singles, depending on you know the long side or the short side. Uh, I, I use them almost every time. Uh, and it keeps the drinks off the table, which is important. Uh, so it keeps it down, take a drink, put it down, keeps everything safe. It's nice and it works well. The wine holders. Now this is funny because I don't really drink a lot of wine, but when I do, typically we have like these stemless wine glasses. And apparently they're very popular and chic in America, but Europeans laugh at us. I, my co the company I work for during my day job is a French company. Uh, and when they saw we had stemless wine glasses, they just laughed at us. They thought we were not serious wine drinkers, which I'm not, but they laugh at you. So I finally got some stem wine glasses. And I gotta tell you, I, we, my wife and I have been drinking wine more often when we play, cause it's fun to fill it up, put it in there. And it's just, again, it adds to the experience. So I didn't think I was ever gonna really use those, but I've actually used them much more than, than I thought. Uh, I'm glad that even the smallest table, the small, uh, so second smallest width and smallest length can still fit eight people around there comfortably. And I, I love that about this table. They're not these small ones. You can fit a lot of people around them. 
Not to mention, I mean, the elephant in the room here is like, this table is unbelievably solid. This thing, when it showed up in the crate, it was like 475 pounds. Now, I don't know how much of that was the crate, but I can tell you it was heavy bringing it in. This thing is solid. It does not budge. You can lean on it. You can do whatever you want. This thing is, the, the craftsmanship in this is blown away. I've played on a lot of other tables. I've played on lower, I've played on those lower cost brands and they feel lower cost. They feel like they're more cheaply made. The wood's not as solid. They run, they, you know, they rumble a little bit as you as you lean on them. Uh, they're thinner. You, you can just you get what you pay for when you're buying a game table. Uh, and I could have bought one of those lower cost ones, um, but I felt like we were going to get a new dining room table anyway. We had uh, a, a bar height table that we wanted to get rid of. We didn't want like the height anymore. We were going to get a new dining room table. And we thought, you know what? If we we're going to get a dining room table and a game table, why don't we just get one the price will be about the same anyways and we'll put them together and, and and we'll just have one table and so that's why we decided to do it and when thinking about this now granted these tables are expensive gaming tables in general are expensive even the low cost ones are expensive but rascalers are higher cost because they are higher value they're they're the highest quality ones out i think that you can buy uh and when i bought this table i thought you know what? i want something that's going to last not just two, three, five, ten years. I want something that's gonna last that I can probably even pass down to my nieces and nephews and such. And I really think that this table is gonna be around 50 years from now because it's that solid. And when you think of you know, price per year that you use it, I think in the end, it's totally gonna get my money's worth because the table is so solid. The charging stations, love that. How many times you're like, oh, I gotta charge my phone, I gotta walk over here, charge it. It's so nice just to let people like, oh, put my phone right there, we'll charge it up. Really nice feature. A lot of these newer fringe features like the, the power, the LED and stuff, you know, I, I don't know a whole lot of other places doing that. And it's, I, I just really love that they're, they're pushing the envelope of this industry. So I love the charging station, the LED lights. I gotta tell you, this was something that I just thought was silly. I thought I would never use it. I kind of grown doing it because it's not a cheap option. But I gotta tell you, I play with it with, with, with the LED lights on every time I play the table. I never thought I would be saying that. Now, granted, as I showed in the video, I usually dim it to about half, maybe a little less than half. So it's there, has a little bit of glow, feels special, but it's not blinding you, it's not distracting, and just do the solid color. And it's like, we'll be playing, and then I will shut the LED lights off to see what it's like without it, and it's like, Oh, what just happened? What a buzzkill. Like, it's really fun and I'm really excited when I play it. Again, it adds to that experience and the excitement of playing with that LED. So even if it's something you think you might not ever use like I did, think about it because you're only getting this table once. I don't think you can add it later. And man, it really does add to what I'm talking about, that event and, and just that experience that I feel like when I'm playing on the table. Now, the Bluetooth speaker system's awesome too. Um, it's You couldn't quite tell there because you know, you're know you over the microphone, but it's loud. It's pretty darn loud. Has that subwoofer. Great for apps. Great for just streaming music. Uh, now, if I were to do this again, I, pro I personally probably wouldn't get the speaker system just because this table's in a room where I already have a very high-end stereo system that's, that's quite amazing. And so I usually pipe music through that. But I will say, having it under the table, you can actually hear the app, like the werewolf, even clearer because it's right there as opposed to just piping it through the whole room. So I'm glad I got it. But this might be one that I would have cut, cut corners on if I were doing this again a second time. But if you don't have a speaker system or you don't have an excellent one in your room, absolutely get this. Especially with all these games going more towards apps, it's going to be more and more prevalent to do this. And even if you're not using an app, just streaming the music's awesome right through the table. It's really cool and it sounds excellent. Now, do I have any negatives about this? Well, there were a couple of negatives of things that I would do differently. I've already talked about the cost. And I don't necessarily say the cost is a negative. Just be warned that, of course, all tables are expensive. Even the low cost ones, you know, are, are two grand, right? Um, so this, this is gonna be higher in cost. In fact, this was probably the most expensive thing I've bought since I bought my wife's engagement ring. This was a large purchase. We thought, a lot of hard, thought long and hard about it. We thought about all the options. We did a lot of homework. Uh, so it is very expensive and not everybody can afford one of these tables. I totally understand that. Um, but if you're in the market and you have the, 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 the money to be able to do this, I think the money was well spent. I think stepping up over the lower cost ones to buy a solid Rascaler's table is gonna last so long. In the end, is gonna be the best bet it was for me, and I, I still feel that way. The thing is solid. Um, now, the other thing is the height and the legroom. I showed you a little bit of the height and the chairs and such. Uh, now, 
Granted, you could make the table, the tables are customizable. So if you want more legroom, you just tell Rascalos, hey, I want more than the 62 centimeters of legroom, which is about 24 inches. Give me more. Of course, you can raise the table height, which will make it a little bit taller. But this is actually quite common. I went after I received my table and played on a, a friend's Geek Cheek table. And that the height was actually, I actually had a half inch more legroom than that one did. Of course, that I think was customized for them as well. They're about my height. Um, but you can easily just raise it. Just something to think about. If I were to do something differently, all I'm saying is that I probably would have raised the height of the table. It's actually perfect for me. Uh, but when I have friends over, anybody over six feet, um, you know, they're tight. They're almost too tight. But Rascal, I've contacted Rascalers since then. They're actually making me some risers to put under the table that match the table. They're doing it free of charge. So they do bend over backwards and their customer service has been absolutely amazing through this whole process. So just a thing to think about, measure your seat height, measure the, the, the know the leg, the, the leg room and see if you need to raise it up higher than the standard. I think the people in America are just normally bigger than them in Europe. And so, you know, just think about that. It's one thing I would have done different. Uh, other than that, that's about it. I just, in summary, love this table to death. It makes every gaming session a more memorable one, a more special one, even though we're, and we're playing more because we just want to play it. We're, we're having drinks more, we're having fun more, we're doing this more, we're having more people over. And granted, a lot of that might be because it's new, but I do have a feeling over the next 50 years, this table is going to be in our, in our family. It can be passed down. It's solid. It was expensive, but worth it because quality in the end is always worth it. We'll see you next time.